Welcome to day one of our NFPA 25 series where we will explore the fundamentals of inspection, testing and maintenance for water-based fire protection systems. Just to start with, I have a quick question. If a fire sprinkler system fails during a fire, what will happen? Obviously, it could cost millions or even lives. It affects both the property as well as the people that's why it's so important to keep the system in good working condition that's where nfpa 25 comes in i would like to start with a quick question if a fire sprinkler system fails who is responsible as per me it's the property owner do you agree with me type yes or no in the comments or let me know what you think in today's session we are going to understand nfpa 25 which is the standard for inspection testing and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems during the construction we follow the installation and design as per the nfpa requirements but later on we just ignore so that's not enough we must prove the system is ready to work when needed so it should work every day every week and every year so nfpa 25 tells us how often the system has to be inspected how to test and what to repair and it is a legal requirement in many jurisdictions as well let us try to understand the basic difference between nfpa 25 and nfpa 13 as you can see on your screen nfpa 13 tells us how to design and install the automatic sprinkler system it will be used during new construction or any major or minor renovation work. NFPA 25 is the only standard which deals with the inspection, testing and maintenance of existing water-based fire protection systems. This standard is used once the system is installed and operational. For example, let us consider a car okay so you have a new car for this car we need to you know maintain otherwise the car will break down so for maintenance purpose for water based system we use nfpa 25 for new construction for the water based printer system we use nfpa 13 why itm why inspection testing and maintenance because a fire protection system is only useful if it works when we require obviously as per NFPA, the purpose of ITM is to ensure system integrity and operational reliability. ITM is required because a system that isn't inspected, tested or maintained might fail when we need it the most. So ITM is critical because it catches hidden problems like blocked pipes, closed walls or corroded sprinklers. It ensures reliability so the system activates immediately during a real fire, meets legal and insurance requirements. It helps avoid fines or claims, denial, protect lives and property. Every second counts in a fire and also it minimizes liability. If something goes wrong, we can prove our part that we did something to 
maintain the system when a system fails during a fire it usually happens due to one of the following reasons for example water didn't reach the fire someone left a valve closed or manual intervention like whenever a repair was done but the valve wasn't reopened damaged components like a corroded sprinkler head or broken pipe lack of maintenance dust debris or aging parts that were never tested and that exactly why nfpa 25 exists to prevent these failures before a fire happens so bottom line even a perfect installed system can fail if it's not properly maintained let us go through the chapters of nfpa 25 whether you are an mep engineer facility manager or site safety officer or fire protection engineer or a manager we must know the chapters to check for the compliance so chapter 1 to 4 refers to administration reference publications definitions general requirements chapter 5 to 9 deals with sprinkler systems standpipe and hose systems private fire service mains fire pumps water storage tanks chapter 10 to 12 deals with water spray fixed systems foam water sprinkler systems water mist systems Chapter 13 to 14 refers to common components and valves, internal piping condition and obstruction investigation. Chapter 15 is the most important chapter, refers to the impairments and special requirements from other NFPA documents and annexes. These are like explanatory material. This is not a part of code. However, this can be used. as a reference guide when we are going to do the itm so annexes includes forms sample reports for inspection testing and maintenance and it defines possible causes of pump troubles etc who is responsible for nfpa 25 compliance there are three major roles involved and each has a different responsibility property owner the one ultimately responsible for making sure nfpa 25 is followed they may know the technical details or may not know but they must ensure the system is inspected tested and maintained if the system fails the owner is held accountable inspection technician or inspector the one who knows the system this is the contractor or the individual hired to do the inspections their job is to know nfpa 25 test the system report any issues and help the owner to stay compliant with nfpa 25 so inspection technician or inspectors are not required by nfpa 25 but they play a key role in keeping the system functional most of the time they submit the reports to the owner after each inspection authority having jurisdiction they enforces fire code and laws in particular area they ensure the systems are being maintained in accordance with nfpa 25 how often we should inspect test and maintain the fire protection systems it has been included in nfpa 25 NFPA 25 defines exact time windows to ensure the systems stay reliable. So let's break down the ITM task frequencies daily. It means 
daily frequency it occurs every day for example checking fire pump room condition weekly frequency once per calendar week example valve position check monthly frequency once per calendar month example checking gauges valve supervision etc quarterly frequency means four times per year minimum interval of two months and maximum of four months semi annual frequency it means twice a year minimum interval of four months and maximum of eight months annual frequency once a year minimum interval of nine months and maximum of 15 months three year frequency it means once every 36 months minimum interval of 30 months and maximum of 40 months five year frequency once every 60 months minimum interval of 54 months and maximum of 60 months on day two we will dive into the actual itm steps for sprinkler systems how to handle impairments and deficiencies the definition of impairments and deficiencies and what those colored inspection tags really mean just remember even a perfectly installed system can fail if it's not inspected tested and maintained properly thanks for watching my video if you found it helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel and make sure to click the bell notification icon so you will get notified whenever i upload a new video also you can find various playlists on my channel including nfpa 13 series 72 series nfpa 20 series hydraulic calibration series and many more so don't forget to check them out thank you once again bye